What is up, everyone? Good morning. Can you hear me? Let me know. Yeah, sorry, guys. I guess the thumbnail is wrong. Should be right. Whatever. Let's get started, all right? First off, how's everyone's weekend? Where's everyone joining me from? Y'all can see me? Y'all can hear me? Massive echo. We'll work on that. Hold on. Shouldn't be. Bulgaria, dang, nice. Didn't know we tra have traders in Bulgaria. Philippines, of Manny Pacquiao, one of the all-time greats. All right. No echo. Yeah, that's what I thought. Must just be you. Let's get right right into it. Okay, going to be a shorter pre-market prep than normal. I've only got thirteen minutes. Um, had some technical difficulties this morning. That's happens having some technical difficulties on my scans this morning too again last few days um floats i'm just gonna remove it so it doesn't distract me for now um very 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 interesting dynamic recently okay you guys super interesting dynamic this is why i really want to do these weekly okay especially weekly because yeah, it's a very interesting time that we've got going on. We've got quite a lot of strength in the markets last week, all right? And with my people, at least, I was trying to explain to them. Most people would think, most people would think, sorry, one second. Let me make sure I get my, your chat up so I can see y'all as well. Oh, we'll just throw this right here. Most people would think since we're in the midst of this bull market that we'd be seeing massive runs in small cap, but it's actually not the case, okay? Actually, last week got a little bit funky in small cap, okay? Um, even though the Qs, SPY, overall markets, really strong last week. And by the way, you can see we are heading into a quite some levels again on in the overall markets at the moment. All right, we're heading into some some pretty interesting levels right now, right? We've got kind of some interesting stuff going on. So interested to, interested to see how this is going to pan out, all right? Um, not just some recent downtrending uh, ideas here, like on the queues, but also some longer term, obviously, highs, which are all time highs, you guys, you know? This area here, these are all-time highs. It's not like random levels, okay? So we're getting to some very, very interesting territory in the overall markets. Same with SPY. You can see a, the same sort of thing here, right? So somewhat interesting to see what the markets are going to do this week. But my job is to react, okay? That's really my only job is to react, right? Appropriately. And at least for last week, what we saw in small cap was a decline in the volatility in my eyes. And what we saw are people rushing into big cap stocks and mid cap stocks last week, chasing strength, in my opinion. That's what we saw. A lot of people uh, chasing big cap and mid, -caps, mid cap stocks. Okay, makes sense. Huge, huge bull run last week in the markets. Totally makes sense. Does everyone get that with me? Stay, let, let me know in chat if you're understanding what I'm trying to say. In other words, what we saw prior to that, prior to last week, okay, literally last week was the turning point for me. But prior to last week, we had seen, I'd say, three, four months of fade in the overall markets, or at least downtrend, right? Weakness, in other words. And throughout that time, small cap has been lit, guys. Like, super lit, okay? 
And when I say lit, I mean huge runners culminating at the end in the last few weeks with TPST and then the huge penny stock runners that we've seen over the last couple months. So there's been a sudden shift, okay? There's been a sudden shift and it's our job to adapt, right? And I was trying to tell my students last week the same thing, okay? Let's actually, in terms of the day trading, we may have to actually take a step back, which is counterintuitive, but everything I teach is counterintuitive and then ends up working. If that makes sense. So quite an interesting scenario here. We're going to get right into the scan here in a second. But the most important thing is macro always. Y'all have to remember that. Okay. For, for my process, especially, and I'm going to be putting out a video on YouTube this week that has my process. Um, pretty drawn out in a pretty clear fashion for you guys. Okay. The entire process, my trading process. And you'll see number one overall markets okay each part of process is like a, as a dial that i can turn up and down lately down way down overall markets have not affected small caps so much in terms of we've had big runners um big running small cap stocks right but last week gave me a little second where it's like okay you know let's adapt we're not seeing huge runners in fact, we're seeing big cap, actual big cap stocks, mid cap stocks, and small cap stocks run 5, 10, 15, 20%. All of them. Everything, right? So, that is the idea. The idea is that we must adapt just because it's a nice bull market does not mean it's super tradable. To the, for the from a day trading perspective, at least, unless you're going to be trading big caps and working off SPY and working off the Qs. Does that make sense to everyone? I really hope it makes sense. It's a big part of what we do here. So right now, since overall markets are pretty strong, okay, that's one thing. Maybe I should be looking into big caps, but I feel too late for that after what happened last week, personally, and the levels that the markets are getting up into. Now, if these, if we, if these markets start to break to highs and stuff like that, yeah. Who knows what's going to happen? Well, I, I know what's going to happen. We're going to see a lot of these big cap and mid cap stocks continue to run, right? And the investors, you know, it's been a good time for those people. The people who are just sitting around with their stocks and their two shares of Apple or whatever, right? But as a day trader, I need volatility. Would I trade the cues? I don't trade the cues personally. I don't find edge almost ever trading the cues or spy personally okay i don't trade them enough or and or i just don't believe in the edge enough there with everyone else trying to trade them and a lot of people way smarter than me that now know a lot more than me i trade i mean i can tell you from a basic standpoint this is getting into highs and then into highs on the overall markets right so i leave that for those for people who want to do that stuff right what i care about is my niche what I care about is my niche, okay? And my niche right now, what I've got is this. My niche right now, what I've got is this on my scan, right? Anything that's up at all 5%. Well, I've got 50 stocks. Last week, you guys, okay? Last week, there would be no stocks over a dollar on this scan. There'd be none. Okay, I let me know in chat if you guys understand. Let me know this. We've only got six minutes till market open. But last week, the week before, for the last four months, I look at this scan every single day. There would be nothing over $10 on this scan, maybe one or two stocks. Does that make sense? Or am I all by myself? It's a big deal, right? What's going on right now, y'all? Big, big deal. It's really important to understand the nuances and the ebbs and flows of what happens on your scan in the morning. So if you were shifting to big cap stocks and trying to trade the, the problem and the sucky part is, sorry, the sucky part is, is that it takes more capital guys. They don't move as much. We can't make as much money day trading that stuff. If you don't have capital in particular which a lot of, lot of people that trade small cap don't. So I really hope that makes sense, you guys. I really hope that makes sense. If you're appreciating the, if you're appreciating the, the info this morning, because things have changed, 
please smash the like please hit the subscribe button it means a lot if you're one of my wolves make sure you double smash that like and then smash it one more time because if you hit it twice then you unhit it so hit it three times i don't know um what's going on with my camera here sorry y'all um i hope that makes sense though okay so right now we'll see what we're gonna you know i'm not trying to we got another gap up for now and spy okay we're gonna be gapping up to like the 435s here again we're kind of getting into some levels that i'm interested to see what they're gonna do with them um you know we will kind of see what they do all right meanwhile Meanwhile, let's see what we've got going on in small cap. All right. Anything big cap. We've got a lot of bigger market caps. Look at this. 36 bill, 25 bill, 22 billion. I'm pretty much ignoring any of those. All right. Yeah, you can filter for prices, which I, which I haven't had to do for so long. And this is a really, really important dynamic to understand right now, you guys. Okay. I haven't had to filter for price in a long time, in a really long time. And I've had no stocks over $10 on my scan and hardly any over five or seven or eight. Okay. And look at my scan parameters. They're nothing. $50,000 volume is nothing. 5% change is nothing. Okay. So now what I'm going to have to do is probably filter out some of these market caps at least. Okay. I don't know. A billion. Let's stick with a billion for now. And probably some price ranges. I'm not gonna I have no need personally to I don't really trade big cap stocks myself. I'm not a fan. Okay. So what I've done is filtered out most of the bigger cap stocks there just through price, through capping my price at 20. Just because I do still kind of want to see what's you know, there may be, and I've been talking about this for a long time and have not done well to capitalize on it, but there may be some real opportunities like and some of these mid cap stocks that have been fading this year okay into the in towards small cap and that's what i believe some of these will see some of the i guess you could call better stocks kind of float upwards with this market but okay in terms of trip and this is why by the way y'all i prefer markets like we just had to like a big bull market okay at least weeks like last week where Last week was the week, okay, where every person and like their grandma was like, oh, let's buy some stocks last week. This is my opinion, okay? This is what I think. You know, we saw a nice bull run. And when I'm seeing volume like that creep into all of the other realms of, of the markets right now, let's keep it like this so we can kind of see. All right, I'm going to remove the market caps again. Okay. It can be kind of frustrating for me as a small cap day trader. So I really hope that makes sense to you guys. Just because we're in a downturn in the markets does not mean that small cap's not tradable. In fact, completely the opposite sometimes. And just because we're in a big bull market doesn't mean that, you know, that's, that it's super tradable and stocks are just going to go up, you know, endlessly. Sometimes small caps not tradable in a bull market. Sometimes the opposite, right? And we're talking about the nuances of, of day trading, okay? And of the skin and of small cap. Sorry, y'all, trying to... Trying to get this to stop being so goddamn blurry. Okay. Markets are open. We... Let's see. Um... It was a smaller pre-market this morning. If y'all want me to keep going, smash the like and comment down below. Comment not in the chat. Say, please stay and I'll stay if we get like 20. I don't know. If 20 people say, please stay in the comments. I'll down below. I'll stay. Um, quick look at the tickers. Okay. Quick look at the tickers. Because I want you guys to see this is a different... It's a different scenario that we're dealing with. It's not 
So what I have to do right now is filter out noise again. Okay, so we're gonna filter out noise. We'll just, let's say 20 again. Percent, percent change five. I'm gonna go to 250 and just kind of get me something a little bit liquid. That's up a little bit. That's less than $20. We've only got 27, okay? All right, all right, all right. Oh, that works, Tanner. No problem. That works good enough. All right, all right, all right. Chill, chill, chill. Chill, chill, chill. All right. Let's get into it. Um, so we're just going to go through kind of this top list right here and see what we've got going on. Irie? It's all Irie, man. Um, is this a Jamaican company? If so, it's all Irie. Um, sorry. Uh, my One of my best friends from college and my strike partner at Boston University, his name was Cedric Chin. Super Jamaican and uh, amazing player. Amazing, amazing player. He, uh, when he would speak to his friends back home, yeah, I didn't understand one word that dude said. Same English, not same English, but that accent. It's all iry, man. All right, sorry. OGI. You know, and it goes back to this whole thing. Look at this. If we're looking at small cap and stocks in general, there are no stocks that are up 100% this morning. You know, big cap stocks don't really gap 100%, except on earnings sometimes crazy, crazy earnings. And mostly I've rarely seen that. Um, let's see here. Why is this so small? Let's see our peeps. <laughs> Monday mornings, and this is good because I, due to technical difficulties, was not as prepared I was as I usually am for market open. Okay, as I usually am for market open. Sorry, just trying to get some bearings here. OGI. Where's my chat at? Chat so I can see your questions. Okay, OGI reversal. They announced a 124.6 million investment from Baton Creation of Jupiter Strategy. What is that? Canadian? Cambodian? I don't know what that C is. Canadian. Is that Toronto? Um, So they do have a PR. Again, when we don't have top percent gainers, like big gappers, when we don't have big gappers like this, guys, it makes trading difficult for me because I need something with volatility and range, something where I can get great risk reward off a big pool towards lows, right? This is going to be kind of a different market. CDIO is up again. They're from last week. Um, CDIO is up again, going on a multi-day run here. Okay. I broke this down for the pack last week. Pretty fantastically. And now we're actually jumping up and breaking out again this morning. So starting Friday, had a little push. Multi-day, multi-week move on CDIO. Okay, their CDI CDIOs move. They did have a catalyst too. They did have a catalyst um, on a contract from Vizient. And then the day before talking about leveraging AI, blah, 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 blah. 
Okay. So this is a breakout. This is a breakout continuation. This would be the breakout day for me. Okay. And none of this is playable to me. So I just ignore it personally. Why is it not playable? It's broken out twice, basically. You know? We're all on a multi-leg multi, multi leg of this. And truthfully, a market like this where it's just not... And we'll see if things change. I'm hoping things change this morning. We've got Verb popping a little bit. On just a PR. A PR about new tech something. Okay, y'all know, should know. So this already spiked on that news to 37. This is no trade for me up here, okay? It's just no trade. It's a straight morning spike. Where's my risk reward? No risk reward, don't care, you know? And this is something you guys have to really, 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 really settle into, okay? Like really settle into is... I'm sure a lot of you probably get to a chart like this and get super excited. And it's not to say that it can't go up, right? It's just to say that this is the most god-awful worst entry in all of stock trading, in my opinion. This is where every single noob lives. Every single noob. This is where if you're diluting shares, millions of shares, this is where you would dump them because this is where this sort of volume comes in. Short squeeze if someone's shorting highs, right? Bunch of chasers through highs, okay? So very key dynamic. It's good to get to chart. Like we're a little bit late getting to a lot of charts this morning. Go back to some of the other, some of my other lives where I'm prepared and you'll see it's all the same. This is where I'm supposed to sell no matter what. Some shares, this is profit taking land and nothing else for me these days, especially in a market like this, okay? In a market like this, I mean not volatile, not a lot of big spikers with a lot of follow through right now, okay? If we don't have concentrated volume and tickers, we're not going to get big squeezes. Does that make sense? So as volume gets spread out amongst all these random tickers, we are not going to get a big short squeeze. And if it's just a bunch of buyers from random chats and stuff buying these crap stocks, they're just going to fall. Does that make sense, everyone? Please let me know in chat. It's so important. It's so important to understand this dynamic that even if this goes up, through this level, which that's what I would want if I were long near lows, right? That it just doesn't matter. Let it go without you. Even this pool, this pool is what's like every crap trader bought it right there. 37, 38, probably 37, 36, 5, trying to get in premature. All of this stuff. This area is an area of only profit taking for me. Okay, so when we get to this, I don't get FOMO. Honestly, if you guys, if I wasn't sitting here trying to make sure that you guys understand this principle right now, that this is the worst entry in all of stock trading, in my eyes, if you're trying to get consistent to the long side, okay, little VWAP hold for now, I'm going to try to push again, don't mind it, let's do some process on verb, all right, uh, reverse split here or no, just earnings. Reverse split here. So their last split was back in April. They did a one for 40. Okay. Which means, you know, back in April, they were trading under a dollar. For those who don't understand this. Okay. For those who don't understand this, they were trading under a dollar in April. They were a cheap penny stock. All right. But now for some reason, we're, I mean, we're looking April. Okay. They did a split and got up to five bucks. Right. So now we're only talking, uh, Seven months later, guess where they're trading at? 36, 20 cents again. Why the fuck is that? Well, they must be dumping. It's the only reason because they spiked to 350 here in September and in the last two months went from 325 down to almost zero. Okay, make sure to hit the like and subscribe if you guys haven't, by the way. I'm going to be trying my best to help get you guys away from a lot of the crap on YouTube right now for free. Okay to get you away from a lot of the crap that's not going to help you over time and hopefully get you guys some, some processes in place that are going to make it almost impossible to not be profitable over time. Okay? That's the idea behind everything I do with my teaching.
Okay, so here's verb. And if I look at a chart like this, I'm suspicious immediately as to why they keep going down here. Okay. I already know the reason, usually. <clears throat> Let's see. Lucky, 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 lucky. So this, these blue bars are the outstanding shares. Currently, there's 4.5 million outstanding. Here's our float up here, which we needed to check anyways because my floats are not working right now on on scans here's their overall risk is high i know that they've got 10.3 million shares to dilute uh from an atm and only 0.93 from warrant so only an atm here it's actually not the worst thing i've ever seen and i'd imagine it's because look at this okay looky looky guys look this is their outstanding shares all right 331.22, well, that hasn't changed that much, but but you can see these have been growing. 1360s, 48. Convertible note with none left from January 2022. Preferreds, none left. So they, yeah, they don't have too much going on outside of an ATM that's limited by a baby shelf at the moment. So they've only got about 4 mil to dilute, but 4 million, okay, $4 million at this price is how many, right? That's what you have to ask yourself. $4 million um, left to dilute and a stock trading at 40 cents, you know, they're going to get what, 10 million shares out of that, that they could technically dilute down here when the float's only a certain amount. And there's more to it. We can get more into it and stuff like that, but just know they've got more than double their, and that is, yeah, see 10. That's why it shows 10 here, 10 million shares they'd be able to dump on us, okay? Um, that's that. I want to hit a couple more tickers while we're sitting here because what's CTNT actually? Hold up. Here's our rando. And I was wondering if we're going to get a rando spiker this morning because, because of the pool market. You know, it's, I'd imagine if you were some kind of pumper somewhere, you know, I think it's a good opportunity to pump. Another chart that's just up from a buck to 220 and not much for me to do with it. CTNT, no news, no nothing, just rando, okay? Just totally rando. T to net supply chain, looks like an IPO from August. Not really done much, never traded volume. So that's what this is. Um, could just be a pump and dump. No real rhyme or reason. And if I don't have rhyme or reason, I don't press buttons, y'all. Okay? Here is Verb. All right? And some poor guy somewhere bought it right here. Didn't cut it. And is feeling super justified with their trading right now. Okay? Feel bad for that person. So, again, it's not to say it doesn't go higher. It's just to say when it doesn't, you've bought the dead top. The dead top. A. Eh? When this does not go higher and you're buying that, you're buying dead top. You're the worst trader in all of that stock all that day. Does that make sense? When this doesn't work, let me know in chat. Please let me know why. Even though it may go higher, I don't care. I don't. I see it most of the time go lower. Please let me know this in chat. Please. It's, I can't say, I can't. Someone just bought it right here, too. You know what I mean? Like, oh, definitely strong. Okay? Please. And smash that subscribe and like if you haven't yet. It's a big, big deal, this. If you cannot do this, you are immediately going to get better at tra day trading. Long, especially. Especially small cap. I don't know. I can't speak for big cap stocks and stuff. 
but I pretty much can. I can. This happens everywhere, guys. Everywhere where computers trade too, by the way. <laughs> everywhere where it's like algorithms and stuff, you are going to keep seeing that. So, and they're in small cap. They're not not in small cap. They are here now to stay as long as we have volume. HFTs, algorithmic traders, computers. Look at that pool. Right? Okay, CTNT, pull, little pullback, don't care. Could be just be a pump and dump at this point. Don't see a PR, don't see any reason. OGI, gap and crap reversal. Almost a perfect one. Light range though, only 10 cent range. So let's hit this idea at least because that was the first kind of percent gainer on our scan at least, but Should stay over here. OGI, hit the one minute and let's hit risk reward, all right? Simple, this one's only got 10 cent range. So I can already tell you, I'd need like two cent, one cent risk back to high a day, which was here, all right? Here's your high a day in the morning, um, buck 57, our low a day is a buck 45. That gives us literally just 12 cents range to take a single from, all right? And then this is all that matters is I'm getting that one to five to high a day. Okay. This is all that matters. So we got to dumb it way down for me. And this, and it doesn't matter where this, if this, if we're, if we're looking at a reversal off of, you know, a buck 40 and we're getting down towards this level or something, same sort of idea applies and why I like stocks with a lot of range and big pullbacks. Because the bigger the pullback, the bigger the bounce, the more range to reward if it starts to bounce and short start to cover and get that chain reaction back to VWAP and high a day and pre-market highs that we keep talking about, okay? And that's what also makes this not as ideal. There's not as much juice in the squeeze. And this has been not just today, but it's been last week. We have had actually stocks that have been not spiking or dropping in the morning. In fact, some of the biggest percent gainers on my scan last week, and this is a very key, very, very, very key point, um, were what? $1 stocks or so, little gappers, right? Big volume, consolidation out the gate. Consolidation out the gate. We saw the big volume runners last week hold out the gate and consolidate out the gate, guys. Okay, does that make sense? I think Tenon was one of them. Was that Tinon's run was it was right? Yep. Look, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, very key. And I tried this on Friday and took a small loss on it. Okay, on the pool. But um, this was the opening of Tinon after doing a ton of pre market volume. It just traded between a buck fifty and a buck thirty and a buck thirty twenty cent range for like the first 10, 15 minutes of the morning. Barely broke down, and this was on a lot of volume, y'all. Tried to reclaim, broke down, all day fader. Not an all day fader, I'm sorry. Look at that. Holy crap. They brought it back into the close and squeezed into after hours. Holy shit. Pretty wild. That's actually a good one to keep an eye on, I think, just based on what they did with it on Friday. But. In other words, a weird change in patterns last week. There was, and it wasn't morning spikers. It wasn't gap and crap reversals. You know, it was kind of weird consolidation. Someone hit me with the other one. What was the other one? Uh, the day before T9 last week. Someone hit me with that. Yeah, thank you. Look at this. PBLS, CLLS, I just want to show you, uh, just to give you an example, you guys, it's super important to understand the patterns are changing and we have to adapt. We have to always be adapting. And when I get one that doesn't work, all right, we got to see another one. Look at this, look at that. PBLA, okay? Look how much volume, all right? And it just consolidated for 
30 minutes, same exact thing. Small breakdown and a push. Little fade. This one, though, did not bounce, right? And that may be why that may be why we saw T9 actually hold, okay? Because the dollar ends up being important, like we've talked about. And these guys, instead, when they broke down end of day, had a super clean buck hold. It just took them all day to bring it to a dollar, you know, and then held it. So it goes to show that these guys, maybe they're trying to hold a buck. And PBLA, they didn't really give two shits. And they were just going to, you know, dilute, in other words. And that is, that's small cap, all right? Okay. Let's take a few more looks here. Verb. Hanging in there nicely. Justifying all these high day buyers. You know, this guy's feeling pretty good now. This guy's feeling pretty good now. I hope it goes. I never root for stocks to fail unless I'm trying to dip by them. I'm not trying to dip by this. But they don't look as dilutive as they once were. And that's because they've been diluting. Okay. Herb, uh, DBGI just hit the scan. Again, volume's kind of low here. They just halted up twice on news, maybe, too? They're announcing strategic review of strategic alternatives to maximize shareholder value. You know what's funny? That's the biggest goddamn joke I've ever heard in my life. Ever. Literally ever. They never do this, guys. Ever. I talk about this. I just went on uh, Investors Underground. I just did a uh, podcast with Anthony last week. And we talk a lot about this. You know, people talk about scams and stock market and scams and pump and dumpers and like Atlas and all the pumpers over the years and nothing is worse than these companies man you know there's i've i've yet to see one just one of these companies not even one attempt to actually maximize shareholder value it's fucking wild anyways strategic alternatives here there's no trade here for me really at this point you know no action Anyone who's going to be trading post halt and all this good stuff is just gambling in my eyes. Okay. Every single market open to me, every single one or every single unhalt is a market open. I wonder if Zach can pump stocks from prison. No, it, no. The, the, the truth is, is that all their pumps stop working at the end. Once everyone knows what's happening, it stops working. Go watch my first YouTube video from this year or whatever on being a contrarian and the one concept. Uh, it's a, that that holds true across everything, any strategy. LIFW's a uh, little bit more this week. Really, really nice reverse split pump here. It was a swing. I didn't touch it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Fade to a dollar. Oh, all right. That sucks because that is the best looking split pump i've seen in a long time the problem is normally the magic of this setup guys normally is that this goes from here to here in one day that's the magic usually okay is that i don't have to sit around it's usually not 10 days down 10 days up is what i'm trying to say okay and i don't fuck with it up here period i was only only supposed to be long from a dollar let me know in chat if that makes sense, please. Please, please, please let me know in chat if this makes sense. If you're not subscribed, please make sure to subscribe so I can drop the heat for you every week and try to keep you safe and give you some really, really fresh ideas in terms of strategies, ideas, risk reward, how to maximize what we're trying to do here, how to adapt within different markets. No stocks are up 100%, guys. And they haven't really been like last week. The end of last week sucked for trading for day trading, even though the markets have been good. Right. So just smash the like, please, if you haven't. Um, verb. Let's check that out. 
I can tell you we're 25 minutes into the day. We're almost half an hour into the day. And there's not much that it would kind of take a lot for me to trade stuff. I have zero qualms with letting everything shake today. And everything do its thing. And coming back tomorrow. We have any of our alerters making moves this morning? Any pumping going on in any of these chats? The BGI. Look at my scan, y'all. Right? Stocks under 20 that are more than 5% up on very a quarter million dollar volume. Not very much. There's not that much, which is kind of surprising. But not to me and not to the people in my chat from last week. We understand this dynamic, the ebbs and flows. CDIO. So that's what we're working with. A couple multi-day breakouts. I don't care about this because my only entry is like 40 cents. If I'm trying to play a breakout, which I not. I've made it quite clear that I'm not planning on trying to trade many breakouts ever again, really, until it becomes the prevalent pattern. Like everything's breaking out for some reason and they all work really well. It's, it's my goal to not to not trade any breakouts ever. If I've not positioned myself correctly for a breakout, I don't need to play them. In other words, is what I'm trying to say. I'm wondering if they're trying to run LIFW to like some of these previous highs now. You know, they may be. Not too bad. That's right. Fairly clean for now. You're welcome, US Records. Would I take a stab at OGI right now? Yeah, I'll get to the chat now. Sorry, guys. I've been ignoring all of you, but we are going to just open, be completely open Q&A right now, okay? We're going to go totally open Q&A. Sorry, I'm just looking at a few tickers that are on my scan just to do my little bit of due diligence really fast. FW, BGI we already hit, didn't we? High risk. I, wow. It's because they're a low float. It says they're a micro float on DBGI still, which is always you're at the risk. They have to. They're you guys, and we'll go through a whole another lesson on um, compliance stuff. But they have to. Uh, there are a lot of rules to stay listed on Nasdaq that have to do with float size as well and shares outstanding. They can't. It ha everything has to be. They're gonna have to dilute. In other words. Withdrawn offering. They've got a price at twenty five cents on OGI. So the only thing keeping me out of this, guys, by the way, and gals, the only thing that would really be keeping me out of this, sorry is just kind of the fact of what happened last week with these mid $1 kind of biotech movers. Is OGI weed? Organogram? It sounds like weedy to me. Marijuana sectory to me. Reset for the ticker name. Hell yeah, Ravi. Welcome. You know, we've been getting quite a few, you know, the pack's been growing. And I'm super happy to be getting new traders instead of a bunch of jaded traders like I always have been getting over the years, which I love. I love 
nothing more than helping a broken trader, man. And because most of those people who are broken, they finally get to me because they've been trying strategies that suck for so long or with a mentor that hasn't gotten them anywhere for so fucking long, you know? That's a big deal. You know, I talk about it all the time. If I were if I were still just learning to trade and I was with a teacher and I wasn't having any results for six, eight months, a year, you know, especially like beyond a year, I'd there'd be no reason to stay with that person once you've learned everything that that person has to offer, in my opinion. So if anyone's looking to make a move, you know, we'd love to have you in the pack. We're, it's a great, 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 great community. Okay, let's look at a few more tickers and then I'm going straight Q&A right now again. There's a QR code there if you'd like and 20% off for everything. I think it goes for everything in the store. I do one-on-one -on -one mentorship. I do uh, group therapy on Fridays, trader therapy where we all get together and and talk psychology. I do live webinars like this every single morning, Monday through Friday. And then most power hours, I do a webinar just like this as well. Every single one of them has been getting put on the site. Um, it's a badass community. If you guys are in Cali, if you're in San Fran over over uh, Thursday, Friday, live, I'm doing a live boot camp there. So this Thursday and Friday, I'll be in San Fran. If you're anywhere close or you've been on the fence, I think we have three seats left for that one. And it's the last one for the year, okay? I'll be announcing next year's tour schedule sometime at the end of the year, but. Let's see here. Okay. Beautiful move, LIFW, right? But again, I don't care for it. I don't care for it. I don't chase up here. The trade's been dead for me for a long time. How long since but down here? I don't buy it, you know, that for me. That's where the edge lied in this whole scenario. OK, the real edge was only here and nowhere else. There's no edge up here for me. It's chasing with everyone else. There's no trade there for me. Um, let me get back to the rest of your questions now. Let's take that. Let's move that for you. Put that over there. What's my process to track any new setup? Spreadsheets to track data, then crunch the numbers, find out the pattern. Do I have any other specific method? Nope. Spreadsheet goes on to a spreadsheet immediately. Um, if it's something that I'm trying to find, if it's a new pattern or new setup, and that's it. Then it's all about watching the setup, trying to trade it, trying to find good risk reward, um, and tracking through time how that works for me. You can paper trade if you'd like. I've been doing that specifically on new setups. I've been paper trading them, actually. I've been paper trading them. The key is, is don't be an idiot. You know, if I'm trying to paper trade, I know I'm going to be taking uh, whatever my account size is. You have to really, really take that into account. It's a big deal, you guys. Uh, sizing down, you know, when we're trying to learn new setups, we talk about sizing down too, okay? We talk about sizing down. Everyone gets it wrong when they size down and they're like, and that's why people are like, oh, I can't do it. No, you can. You have zero discipline or control over yourself or creativity or the ability, you know, to change. And I get it. The whole thing is like, if you're trading bigger size and then you have to size down, it sucks because it doesn't have the same emotional impact. No, don't be stupid. That's the whole key. The whole key is it doesn't have the same emotional impact. 
But the whole point is, if you want to actually use that practice, because what it is, is practice. Okay, when I'm tracking a new setup, I am practicing. You know what I mean? I'm trying to get real life practice, whether it's paper trade or trade with small size. The key is then to make it as realistic of practice as possible. Just like soccer for me, right? I wasn't like, oh, this isn't a real game. I'm not going to work hard at soccer today. That's bullshit. That's the kind of attitude all you fucking people have, man, that don't make it. Because you have excuses for why nothing works. Oh, I can't size down. I can't paper trade this. No, man, you got to be disciplined. You got to be fucking disciplined, okay? So when I trade small size, and I've been doing this for my people because I just started a $3,000 account at TD Ameritrade, that I, and it's going to be Schwab, I guess they're going to move them over, but whatever. I'm taking 3K to 25, and then back, and I'm going to just keep starting it every year, all year for my students. Go to 25, bring it back to three. Go to 25, bring it back to three. So I've been looking at the size. So I've been actually also paper trading, practicing paper trading and trading my bigger account with smaller size too, which is an exercise that I've been working on all goddamn year to protect my big account through the ebbs and what I thought were going to be a lot of ebbs and flows this year and which I was absolutely spot dead on right, you know, with my early webinars from like December, January of this year, guys, Okay. Go back. Who's in chat? Who's in who's in the pack? Like I I don't want to say psychic, but I called a lot of what happened this year, man, in terms of the markets finally, because last year sucked so bad. This year I had my finger on the pulse and my trading was pretty much reflecting the markets and it was a it's been awesome. Okay. But but when we size down. Okay, when I'm sizing down now, say normally I would take 10,000 shares of a stock that's trading at like a buck 20, okay? And I'd normally take 10,000 shares, but I'm trying a new setup. I've been going down to like 1,000 shares, a tenth of that size. I've been getting down to 500 shares, 100 shares even if I need. But then the goal is when I get down to it, if I'm trading 1,000 instead of 10,000, okay? If I'm trading 1,000 shares instead of 10,000 shares, 10x less risk, 10x less reward, on the other end of this trade, right? But the key is let's see let's see how this trade works. How should I be sizing out? What fractions am I going to be sizing out in? Which levels do I size out into and how does this work, okay? How can I get best risk reward from this setup? It's not just here's a setup. But how then how then do I make the math work for me? How do I make the charts work for me? Okay? Big deal here. So that's what I do. I trade small size if it's a 1000 and my targets are VWAP high of day pre-market high, okay, on a reversal. And I have a thousand shares. Okay, well, if in the normal trade, I'm supposed to be taking a quarter off into VWAP, all right? But in this case, because I only have a thousand shares, that that quarter that I have to take off is only 250 shares. And it may be almost no money that I am actually locking in, at least from my perspective, into VWAP, into my first target. So it may only be like five or $10, guys. You know, a minuscule amount. That is not the fucking point. The point is that I'm going to have 750 shares left and I'm going to try to take that higher. At target number two, if price action allows. And I'm going to try to sell a quarter or a half or maybe all there if price action allows or tells me. And guess what? I'll make a little bit more from those 250 shares or 500 shares I dish off there. And then the rest, hopefully, you know, into target three. Or maybe I have a quarter left and I've hit target three. I've sold a quarter at target three and I've got a quarter left for bonus land where like, I don't know, at least this 250 shares, I can take off maybe into the next highs. This is not a, this is bread and butter shit. This is execution shit, right? I have to do that with my thousand shares. I got to take 250 off because I need to make sure that when I'm trading 10,000 shares, I'm taking 2,500 fucking shares off there. Okay, and instead of locking in 510, I'm, I'm locking in 500 sometimes at that position, depending on the charts. Does that make sense, y'all? Let me know in chat, please. It's a big deal. People can't use this tool because someone told them that it doesn't fucking help them because they don't have enough skin in the game. Shut the fuck up. That's just someone re repeating someone else's bullshit, which is everything I see on the internet. Everyone repeating other people's bullshit that doesn't actually make them profitable because they're not profitable. They're just saying what this guy said. And literally, the more I go on YouTube, the more literally people are just copying each other. They don't, nothing's original because they're not actually making money trading. 
it sucks, guys, but it just is what it is. Sorry, I'm going on a fucking rant right now, but it pisses me off, you know? And I watch people, I'm like, that. There's you're reading a fucking script right now, and it's bullshit, and it's just very, very cookie-cutter nonsense that has... I can tell you didn't gain this knowledge through your trade experience, and you are not a guru. You know what I mean? There's a lot of that going on. And because of that, everyone just spreads the same information, and because of that, everyone sucks. So that's what I'm trying to get to you guys is not that. And if you appreciate that, please smash the like for me because I don't have the most editing. I don't have the best fucking editing team and I don't do all that shit. I'm just here to give you guys information. Okay. I'm not. Pisses me off. That's what's kept me from being on YouTube, y'all. That's what kept me from being here in the first place. It's like, I don't, you know, everyone else is better at YouTubing than me. Not trading, but YouTubing for sure, you know? And fuck that, man. Bring real trading to this to this joint. But. Anyways, sizing down is a huge, beautiful tool. So is paper trading, right? Just use it properly. Use it properly. If I have 100 shares, I'm taking off 250. I'm sorry, I'm taking off 25. If I got a if I'm taking if I got 100 shares these days, I'm going to try to make the most out of these 100 shares. Okay? So what are my targets? Okay, I got two targets. So let's take half off into target 1 and half off into target 2 if I can. Depending on conviction and stuff like that. But that's the goal for me. That's the game. Let's extend these shares. Let's always cut at risk how we're supposed to. Okay? I really, really hope that makes sense. We're trying to practice, man. Like, and I love I, that's why I'm glad you asked about the setup. Sorry, that's this is just the answer to one fucking question, but but practice is very, very, very important. Okay, so we take small size so that we can trade big size. The whole goal is so that we can take our numbers and transpose them into bigger and bigger sizes and exponentially grow at one point once we have the confidence and conviction in our setups and in the markets at the time. So. Yeah. Let me get back to these. Sorry, y'all. Please smash the like if you appreciate the rants and the raw info. Make sure you're subscribed. I'm going to get a lot more YouTube videos to you as well, not just live. And get you, you know, some five and ten minute concepts that should be actual hacks and actual fixes for a lot of the dumb things that happen to us as traders. John asked, do I pay attention to all the traditional candlestick patterns like wedges, cup and handle, doji candles, that sort of thing? Or do I take that with a grain of salt? I take it with a huge grain of salt and I know them all. I know them all, okay? You can't just ignore what everyone knows. You have to take that into account, but understand that that's all everyone knows at times. And that, you know, if an algorithm, a, a big boy, you know, if a big boy's trading these things, they know how to manipulate those patterns. Are you kidding me? A cup and handle, like, I tried them all, so don't get me wrong. Everything I say, I've tried too. You know, I'm not, I don't know. If I have not tried something, I won't give you any information on it because I don't know, right? I hope that makes sense. But, um, yeah, I take them with a grain of salt, okay? So I don't specifically, in other words, say, oh, look, there's a cup and handle. Let's, I'm going to buy the cup. Here's the handle. This is where I buy it. Nope. I don't buy breakouts of wedges, okay? Or pennants. I don't like anything with the word breakout in it, first of all. I'm much more likely to buy a breakdown of one that holds and traps, if that makes sense. Of all of these patterns, I'm much more likely to buy the breakdown of any of these patterns than the actual confirmation that that pattern is apparently about to work, if that makes sense. I really hope it does. And it doesn't mean, and I remember everyone's like, oh, it's a self fulfilling prophecy. I'm like, it's not. It fucking isn't. Only when it works. The rest of the time, it's not. In fact, it's the opposite. It's a self fucked prophecy for everyone who's a noob trying to play this self fulfilling prophecy. You know who knows it? Algorithms. The institutional investors trying to dump their shares. Totally. They're like, yes, here it is. They might even set that bitch up for you, right? 
Look, let's set up a nice uh, cup and handle for these fucking idiots. <laughs> Seriously. Good question, though. So I don't ignore them. I know them. I don't specifically trade them for small cap. How do I journal? I have an Excel file. I just I hand journal as well. Has always been my favorite thing to do is hand journal. Um, I'm on a couple different sites and I'm looking for a better solution to all of that, actually. Currently, site wise. But traditionally over time spreadsheets. Sorry, just going through uh, questions real quick. Yeah, everyone, I, I dogged on paper trading when I started teaching, you know, because that, that's what everyone else said. And I'm like, yeah, it makes sense. I just started trading with money and that's how it works for me. But I think it's an amazing tool. Why am I going to just jump into the deep end with the sharks, man? I'm just bait, you know, I don't want to get in there until I've put a, you know, put a little bulk on. And I'm ready to kind of like hold my own a little bit and understand what the hell is going on. Of course, paper trading is not the same, but like I said, like last week I was fucking around with some zero D DTE option nonsense. I didn't, I didn't make money on one of them, I don't think, but all of them were paper trades. And that's just me. I'm trying to learn new tools right now. Myself, don't ever want to be stagnant, you guys. Okay, so I'm trying to learn new tools myself. And when I learn new tools, I don't like to talk about it too much. I like to learn new tools in silence and paper trading. <laughs> you know, it's been a little while since I've started to get into any other instrument. So, but I'm going to paper trade the shit out of it. And if I didn't, and I just walk, I, I can tell you what, if I walked into those zero DTE things with, with a PDT account, it's fucking gone day one, baby, the whole fucking shenanigan. You know what I'm saying? It's not a joke over there. That's not a joke. That's high risk shit. <laughs> I'm serious. High reward, super high risk, which is I am not about that life until I can figure out how to make it super low risk, super high reward. Um, how I do in small cap, right? The whole thing with small cap is I can take I can take a 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, a hundred thousand dollar position and risk a thousand dollars. That's the whole be that's the whole beauty of that to me is I can take a monster position and if and I can get my risk as tight as I want up to where I want to trade a stock okay when I was uh, you know the option stuff on my paper account I mean I'm up like five G's down five G's the whole money is up or down you know the whole thing's gone at one point so it's like due to the expirations and stuff obviously so that's that Does YouTube have rules about swearing? What, during the lives? Okay, thanks for the info. I'll look it up just in case. Can I say, like, what's swearing though, you know? Do they want, this is only like the fucks or can I say like butthole? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, they haven't done anything to me yet. What platform do I use to paper trade? Right now I've been using DAS for paper trading. There are plenty of places to paper trade. Any other questions? If not, we are going to wrap up this longer than normal pre-market prep today. If you've enjoyed the extended webinar, please smash that like, hit the subscribe. Um, get in the room, man. It's a cool ass room. Beautiful push. Beautiful push on LIFW. All right. And they are. Look, look what they're doing with it. They're getting it up into uh, the, these levels here. And this means that we have to do one thing really fast because this is a reverse split pump. The, uh, we do have to do some stuff before we bail. Brr. That sucks. All right. Mm -mm -mm. That's funny, CB. Take care, buddy. Sorry, I'm not trading. <laughs> Another fucking idiot, but whatever. Um, 
Let's see here. So we've got uh, LIFW is a reverse split pump. It is the biggest runner. They are up 115%, which means I have to start looking for sympathy plays. Um, hopefully homeboy can just jam if he doesn't want to learn how to do that. I don't mind. Um, again, we deal with idiots every day. The whole space is full of them. He probably streams on YouTube, I bet. Pumping stocks or something. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. So we've got LIFW, right? They've done, obviously... Let's just check out kind of some of these recent splits and see if there's anything hanging around that looks decent, huh? So you can see how many splits that we're having come up. These will all possibly be runners. Here are the next three, HYMC, PRE. Here are the last ones that we've got and their respective floats. It's funny to come watch someone repeatedly and talk shit. Go watch something else, dude. <laughs> what a douche. Go watch something else. I don't care. Okay, let's see here. Just ban his ass when I get out of here. Kano. Too high price for me on splits. I don't like splits that are up this much. Why? Dollar floor, right? The whole point of them doing a split is to get away from a buck. These guys did a one for 100 to get well away from a buck. All right. So kind of ignore them for now. Unless for some reason they fade to a buck this week. Somehow, JFBR is going to be a micro float here. No real volume at all for now, but we'll track them going through the rest of the week. Um, that what I will do on all of these tickers for these pumps this week are going to be taking them and setting alerts for news. So I'll be setting news alerts for all of these tickers. MOTS is another worth a watch we're on day three they did a one for 15 another micro float to keep eyes on kind of for the rest of the week mots tnon obviously we saw reverse split pump from last week from thursday that's why i tried trading it on friday fucked it up and we're actually seeing it continue today, okay? So another pump that's starting to work decently. A dollar hold, you guys. It's a whole point. You know, that's why I was kind of interested in these guys Friday. Because it's like, what the hell are they trying to do? Clearly, they're trying to hold a buck. That's why they do the split, you know? Clearly, they're trying to hold a buck. buck. That's why they do the split, so. Okay. Uh-uh. Do FinViz and Thinkorswim scan any good for small cap trading? Yeah, they're fine. There are plenty of free tools that you can use. Plenty of free tools. You know, I go through my personal scans and stuff for my students every day just because for those who may not be able to afford them, I try to at least get them, get them the tickers I'm watching in the mornings because I understand things get expensive. A little triple top on T9 for now. Anyways, there's another one that's actually working, so it's kind of good to see. BYFC split, no volume recently. They are one of the old pumps that would go with, um, what was it? Like the Juneteenth tickers, I want to say. Right? Just going through a few more tickers. Of recent splits just to make sure I'm not missing any of them. That's probably bigger. PXMD. There's another PXMD that's just kind of poised here in the twos. Probably see it make a move here pretty soon if it continue to hold the twos. 
they're just kind of illiquid at the time. So a lot of these you'll see kind of pop and drop quickly too if they do work. Here's another one, ALZN. You can see holding a buck pretty decently. GVP. Oh, God. Let's see, we've been, we've been seeing some of these too where they just split and run for days. There's one. BYU. Interesting, right? Little Chinese. And I do like to go back and see that looks like a pump and dump badly. Um, their last split here, they didn't really pump post split, it looks like. They didn't, they weren't ever, ever really able to pump so much. Chinese ones kind of have to be careful with in case they're just dumping and dumping. C pop. Yeah, C pop, another one. They already kind of perked with volume. You can see they held a buck quickly and it went all the way back to 250 quickly. So, Zevo. Okay, another one with potential here, JWEL, light volume. That one's really nice looking to me. Except for the fact that I think they're also a Chinese pump, which that is the only thing. Some of these ones that are splits, if they are a Chinese pump, it's not to say that they're not going to do a reverse split pump too, but you just have to be careful. Yeah, this looks Chinese. Yeah, this is a Chinese pump. Um, but just be careful, in my opinion with reverse splits on Chinese pumps. Again, not to say that they can't go. It's just to say, be a little bit careful for me. Zevo, Jewel, BHC. So these are the, so now we're getting back and this is crazy. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is day eight. Again, the whole premise, these stocks need to hold a dollar for 10 days. That's the whole premise. That's why LIFW right now is doing what it does because these stocks are a scam. Okay. And because post split, which is this, this is the reverse split. They have to stay over a dollar for 10 days to hold compliance or they get D fucking listed guys. It's the beauty of this strategy. It's the beauty of the scenario. Okay. It's the beauty of the scenario. This is day 10 post split right at a buck. Look at that. And it's ran 500%, you know, 600 fucking percent from, from one which I love to see. Look at that. Beautiful move. Beautiful. Squeeze today. So I am actually really excited to see this, okay? Because I wasn't sure whether we we're going to have runners this week or not based on what was going on with the markets. Yeah? Does that make sense? Beautiful move. Here's their split right here on this day. This is day 10. Their low was 105. Granted, like I said, it took them it took them a week and a half to get to this point where they went parabolic. But But can't they just ask for another 180 day extension? They can. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's not every single time. Some of them you have to be careful. Go back and look if they have a propensity of pumping or if they have a propensity of fading post pump, post split. Okay. <laughs> nope. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. I'm saying I don't mind missing this on a day like today where I'm not sure on the scans. We don't have too much else going on. CDIO. Um, CDIO had a nice actual reversal off lows this morning. Look at that. Jeez. Low a day hold. 45 cents, 44 cents, one penny hold. All the way through high a day. So there's one I missed as well. Happens. Wasn't planning on trading anything this morning. If you go back to the beginning of the webinar, when I have no plans to trade in the morning, I am very, very not likely to trade the afternoon. Or I'm sorry, to just trade something random as it pops up throughout the day. Okay? Very unlikely for that to happen for me. 
But now I've got more of a grip on what's going on. Reverse split pumps this week, hopefully. May see more of those. Um, based on LIFW. Keep it really simple. What's running? What's up? What's the biggest runner today? What is that strategy? Is it a strategy I know? In this case, yeah, 100,000%. One of the best strategies ever created for small cap is what it is. Okay? So that's why I'm going to have an eyes on a certain set of stocks all week, which we just went over, essentially. And I just went over how to find them. And then it's about going through those tickers. Now, for me, I've got enough time to go all those tickers that we just went through. I've got enough time to look at all their charts, all the dilution, all the fundamentals, um, all their news, and everything that I need to do, I get to do ahead of time prior to them, prior to me having to try to trade it. Everyone's just figuring out LIFW today. We've known about it since they did their split initially that they may become a runner, right? Mehoop said, um, Mehoop said, lately reverse splits are not pumping at $1 level. It's rare, uh, it's rare some tickers go, but most not. How do you identify if reverse split will pump after reverse split? They all pump after the split, guys. It's just a matter of the efficacy of it and what the markets are at the time. Just because they pump doesn't mean the markets are ready for that pump, you guys. Okay? Just because they pump doesn't mean they don't also have an offering on the other end that they're going to dump into. Just because they pump doesn't mean it has to move 100, 200, 500%. Get it through your heads. It's not how fucking stock market works, you guys. Okay? At all. It's not. And guess what? It could be perfect market. Everything else perfect. And it still doesn't work. Okay? So that's not the game. You know, the game is to find which ones have the best possibility of running the most. Which are going to have the lower floats. Generally speaking, biotechs. Generally speaking. generally speaking the non-chinese ones okay but just go look at look at the ticker okay look at the ticker look at the ejh look at that look at ejh okay they did their split and these are a chinese pump guys and the this is even chinese pumping right now i feel like <laughs> look at that they did their split at under a buck right here, and now they're running to 250. Kind of reminiscent of something like this, right? They did their split under a buck. They're currently in the dollar fifties right now. So I jacked this one up. I'm going to have to play the macro a lot better. We've been seeing a lot of splits down by a buck, okay? A lot of them lately. We've been split. The truth is, you're saying they're not pumping at a dollar level. I'm saying they are. They always are. There's not, there's not, they aren't. Maybe sometimes, but most of the time, they're at least trying to pump a dollar. The whole That's the whole point. Listen, if they do a split and they don't get over a dollar, okay, they can only do so many splits mathematically without dumping shares. All right. If y'all are enjoying, make sure you smash the like. I don't have to be here anymore. Got a lot of shit to do today with my students, including one-on-ones and other stuff. And we've had some rude ass motherfuckers on this thing today. Excuse me for my French. Not that I care that much at all. In fact, I welcome it. Um, I love nothing than get my blood boiling a little bit in the morning. <clears throat> So we've been seeing splits, in my opinion, of all levels, man, of all levels and, and types. Some don't work, some work. There's just been so many of them. And the markets have been shifting and shifting and shifting. So I only start getting aggressive on them when I need to, when I see them working or if the markets are getting ripe for them, which I kind of think they are right now. Okay, we were seeing bottom bouncers a lot, few weeks for the last months. Why not see some splits go? In fact, T non, obviously. So likely what you're going to see from me throughout this week is that you may see me putting on a couple swing positions. I don't really, really like trading these things when the news comes out. As you can see, they've been tricky. Once they do the pump, 
they'll even fade them and then and hold them and run them so i'm trying to avoid that personally stuff like ejh i ignore the crap out of stuff that's already ran the whole premise of this was the dollar hold post split which was down here all right y'all Do I still work with Sykes or STT or not as much? Not at all. Zero. I haven't for a long time. And I'm not, don't think I'm going to be. What a move on LIFW. Beautiful, beautiful. But look, they, they're running it all the way, guys. They're taking it all the way. I was wondering if they're going to hit this maybe tomorrow. <laughs> nope that's today and this is what you call short squeeze okay this is unadulterated short squeeze right now by the way this is just people literally blowing up their short accounts okay that's why i don't really like short selling it's not that fun it's stressful and any fucking day any day any day you know this is you getting your butt rammed i probably should stop cussing so much unadulterated short squeeze there and when you have levels like this guys on a chart like this that was such a dog crap prior to them fading uh prior to their split remember we were trading lifw um as a penny stock we were trading these guys right here and doing really really well on them right they actually had one of those big multi-week moves and they ran it so pretty freaking phenomenal and we should maybe start seeing stuff hit the scan. Let's look for sympathies right now. Okay. This is, if I'm looking for sympathy right now, here's what I'm doing. We're going to our scan. We're going to reduce the volume. All right. And if you guys, please smash a like if you haven't. Please smash a like if you haven't. Um, as we hit you guys with some more heat. Okay, all I'm doing now, $20 cap, $50,000 uh, volume, which is nothing. I might even take that off a little bit. No, I'm going to keep it. I got to have at least a little bit of volume coming in. And that's it. I'm going to hit uh, percent change five minute on my scan right now. All right. If anything starts popping and is a simp, this is where it will hit. I hope this makes sense to you guys. I am looking for something with really low volume to hit that is a split. It doesn't have to be a split, but most likely if I'm looking for some kind of sympathy to LIFW, I'm looking for a reverse split of sorts. Okay. CTNT. It's not a reverse split. They do have a little 140 base that they're trying to hold. We'll see if it gets pumped more. But it's not a split. All right. Oof. Wow, man. They did this. They did this straight to 10 from the seven. You know. Here's an interesting set. 60% of the time when it crosses seven, it hits 10. 100% of the time. Um, where are you at? Every time. Every time, for some reason, it goes to seven. It just is attracted to 10. I feel like the same with penny stocks at 70 cents. They get attracted to that whole dollar. All right, everyone. Sweet, sweet pump, right? I'm kind of butthurt. I missed it a little bit. I wouldn't have been long this long. That's the whole problem. If I was playing the pump, guys, I would have been out like two, 250, three. You know what I mean? On a swing on this. That is, that's why I look at this without FOMO personally at all. You guys sense even an ounce of FOMO in my voice. I'm so happy. And this is a big time deal for you guys. Um, This is a big time deal for you guys, in my opinion. Okay.
is that if you can cheer the stock on and understand that runners breed runners, this is up 200% on the day when we've had no runners, this is awesome. This makes me so happy on a Monday, guys. Missing this makes me so happy on a fucking Monday. How can you look at this? So I am not now trying to chase this up nine, uh, you know, 200%, like probably some of you are sitting here trying to figure out how to get in this thing, right? I've been so far set and not trading it that maybe I missed an opportunity this morning, obviously. Obviously I did, but, but again, I don't, I look at this like the macro, I needed to be long from a buck here. And this part of the setup is gambly. Okay, I've not made my career by this day. I've made my career by placing myself in the right fucking places, not being the last one in this and then getting lucky that it squeezed today. So I hope this makes sense, man. If you guys are get stuck in, this is the most dangerous fucking stock you can look at right now, right? There's no trade here. There's zero trade ever here. It's done forever for me. I hope you guys understand this, man. But this leads me to this. Let's see what else we fucking got. Are there other runners that would, may be presenting themselves at some point? Right? That's what, that's what you need to use this as, as fuel to, okay, let's do our due diligence. Let's look through all the rest of the splits. Let's see if there are any circumstances like this that might set up that we might make money for in the future. Right? What am I looking for? Reverse splits. That's it. Reverse splits, which we already just went over. I'm going to re uh, and, and I'm going to get off here in one minute because I got to we've been here too long. Um, I don't curse all that much. It just depends. It depends um, on many things. But if I start ranting, I'll start to cuss a little bit more when I get angry. When I'm trying to really prove a point and I get upset because no one listens, I'll cuss. <laughs> I've been trying to cut it out a little bit, but just, uh, and the only reason I don't give a crap about you guys. The only reason is in case anyone has some kids who are trying to learn some stuff. That's all. When I was, when I was trying to learn how to trade and my mentors would cuss too much, I couldn't have my kids in the room. Like this sucks. I'd have to put on headphones and stuff. So that's literally the only reason. All right, any more questions? We'll do Q&A for one more minute um, and then we're gonna wrap up. No trades for me this morning. For some people, that's a problem. For most, they once you know anything about trading for more than five seconds, you'll understand that good traders don't trade most of the time. If I've placed 100 trades this morning, or, you know, I'm fake as fuck in my opinion. Unless you're just like a scalper. There are people who scalp are just super scalpy, but my process dictates that on Monday morning, I let things shake out and let the markets tell me what it's going to do so I can be accurate for the rest of the week instead of gambling like a prick for the whole, you know, morning. There is one setup here. There's one stock that has moved today, parabolically. One. And that setup, I'm late to. Way late. It's a fucking breakout today. All right? So breakout buyers at three got rewarded. Most of the time, they're buying the top. I don't give a shit. Right? I have zero problems sitting on my hands. You watch a Furu, they can't do it because they got to feed. They got to feed subscribers. They got to feed you. They're going to feed your worst instincts that you need to make money and that they pretend to know how. So they're going to give you some sort of alert. They're going to feed you something because you're paying them. They think you got to trade every day. Good traders don't trade every fucking day. Ones I know are, you know, if you don't have the ability to take one day off of your trading, I don't know, you know, what you're doing. Maybe you just started or something, but. Do I trade stocks that only go to a dollar on the split? Nope. I'm I'm long several splits right now in the twos. So they don't have to go to a dollar. A lot of times, guys, the split doesn't go to a buck anymore. Period. Sometimes they do. 
but a lot of times they don't. Okay? Dude, no, oh, I hate you. Come on, Mitnick. Don't mention Creed today, guys. Come on. Chris said, would I keep a reverse split on my watch past 10 days, even 20? Yeah, right now I'm keeping them on for 20 to 30 days before I move them on to another list that a non-pump list or pumped list. I have two lists now for splits. Pumped, non-pumped. When I say pumped, I mean they put out a PR and some volume came in at some point throughout the next 10 to 20 to 30 days. At this point, that's what I do with those. First Forex asked, how much is too much on a good grab and crap reversal? What negates it? Market conditions are going to negate whether I'm playing them. I haven't been playing them lately. Um, and I've actually had to recategorize gap and crap reversal for myself to be able to actually nail them. They're still providing reversals. It's taking a longer time. So the first 15, 30 minute reversals for me until I start seeing them work really heavily, I'm, I've laid off of those. And I'm taking those. I'm doing 15 minutes to 30. I'm putting it on a five or 15 minute time frame. My, my candles. So that's where I'm looking for reversals on these days for like midday reversals and stuff like that. Okay. But because we've been seeing them be longer and drawn out, in other words, CDIO continuing their little strength for the morning. Good question, though. All right, everyone, we are going to wrap this stream up um, again. If you've enjoyed the stream, want to join the pack, want a discount, I'll hit you guys with the Q. Oh, there is a QR code there. Never mind. Uh, QR code, bottom left corner. Use 20 off and we'll give you a discount. I'll be in San Fran this weekend. Um, I've got a couple videos coming to you guys this week. Uh, just regular YouTube videos as well. So make sure you're subscribed and smash the likes for me. Um, and that's pretty much it, man. You know, going into the end of the year, my ideas, hopefully some more split pumps we're going to see, hopefully some bottom bouncers. I'm not sure what the markets are going to give us, but I've been excited all year, man. And I'm st I still happen to be very, very optimistic for the trading. You know, it's just a matter of even look at today. This is a beautiful squeeze. And last week I wasn't sure. I'm like, I don't know what we're going to bring. You know, last week kind of gave me some cause for trepidation this morning. So... I'm glad to see it's a breakout on a reverse split pump that, you know, I wouldn't expect this to have ran this morning. And I think that's shorts got caught with their pants down. So beautiful, right? But for me, I followed my exact process what I'm supposed to do this morning, which is sit on my hands, let everything pan themselves out. Show me what the week may look like. Show me what patterns may or may not be in play. Price ranges may or may not be in play. Okay. And now my goal is to find the next LIFW, which I probably fucking will, because that's all I'm going to work on now once we get off this webinar. All right. What event am I holding in San Francisco? It's just a small boot camp, an intimate one, 20 people, 15, 20 people. Uh, two days of live trading Thursday and Friday this week. Cocktail party Thursday night. Um, so that will be Thursday, Friday in San Fran. 
You can just hit rwtrades.com. I think there's just a few, few seats. Two, maybe, maybe two. Oh, man. You guys enjoy the stream today? Sorry, no trades, but it is what it is. That's why I do this every single day for my students. So they can see lots of days of not trading when I'm not supposed to trade. And lots of days of trading all in on my whole account across a whole sector, if that's the case. That's what good trading is to me. Good trading is not trading. Good trading is trading super heavily when I'm supposed to. Good trading is putting on size and risk when it makes sense, when the markets are ready for that. And my patterns are there and my convictions there, my confidence is here, all of those things. And the rest of the time, it's about protecting yourself and not trading random shit, which no one, that's what people struggle with because they don't have their setup. They trade random shit and suck at it. It is what it is, right? I do my best. My worst trading occurs if I trade random stuff. So. All right, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me. We will catch you guys in chat. My wolves, I'll catch you guys in the main chat for now. And then for power hour prep. And I do believe we have one-on-ones today. Um, we'll have one-on-ones throughout the week. So we'll do those. Uh, San Fran, I'll see you guys in San Fran. All right. So if you all start hitting some of these splits, I'm going to do some due diligence too. And we'll just kind of try to figure out what, um, what we can find out there. So that's it. Again, if you've enjoyed the stream, please smash the like. Um, make sure you're subscribed. I'm going to try to do more of these and get a lot more videos to you guys that are not just live streams. Um, to kind of try to help with some of the nuances and some of the gray areas uh, that I think most people leave out. So that's what we'll do. Thanks for joining. Catch you guys soon. Stay safe. Love you all.